USADA determined Galvao's positive test was caused by a medication prescribed in a therapeutic dose under the care of a physician. What is the likelihood that a doctor is going to prescribe an 18 or 19 year old this drug, clomiphene? Extremely low. Extremely. All right, Derek, my friend, I'm happy to have you on the channel once again. How are you? Good. How about yourself, dude? I'm doing well. I'm not in a sauna, but yeah. I'm doing well. Uh, no, so, thanks for having me. So, so the reason why I contacted you is somebody that I would consider to be the LeBron James of jiu-jitsu was just popped. His name is Mika Galvao. And the reason why I call him the LeBron James of jiu-jitsu, he's probably the most prolific youth athlete in this sport of all time, by far. And if you remember LeBron James when he was like 16, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was everywhere to be seen just as a youth athlete. And Miko Galvao is no different than that. He's a gi and a no gi fighter, which means in the pajamas and out of the pajamas. He's been on a bunch of different promotions, but the place where he was caught is the one place for major athletes where you're not allowed to take drugs. Or if you do take drugs, you're kind of rolling the dice. Now, I did a video uh, like a few weeks ago about a bunch of guys that were caught. USADA was contracted to be testing at the Pan American Championships. Mika was tested before the Pan American Championships, and we're just figuring it out now. Um, but anyways, the IBJJF is like this weird place where a lot of guys dope, and they just kind of like never really get caught or never really get tested. Now, the thing that I want to know from you is what Mika Galvao was tested positive for, clomiphene. What, first off, what is it? What would it be used for, I guess, medically? And why would somebody use it for performance? Like it's clinical application. It's used for, as a fertility med and in general, in like a bodybuilding enhancement ergogenic context, a lot of guys who use it will use it as a way to recover post cycle. So after they take a course of fill in the blank compound, whether it's anabolic steroids, SARMs, anything that could be suppressed their hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis, which is basically just like the brain signaling feedback system to their testes to produce testosterone. That system gets shut down when you're using um, exogenous anabolics, androgens, synthetic uh, steroidal um, androgen receptor modulators, non-steroidal androgen receptor modulators, stuff like that. And in general, these guys, you know, you will come off of a cycle as a bodybuilder or whatever it is that you're doing, somebody who's playing sports, whatever it is, and you want to recover as fast as possible with minimal, you know, dealing with crashing. So you would use something that could otherwise expedite your recovery by kind of like kickstarting your HPTA into higher gear and kind of tricking it into, you know, kicking up your testosterone production faster and to a greater velocity. So with a SERM, it's called a SERM, Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator. A lot of people are familiar with SARM, Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, mm -hmm. which were, they interact with the androgen receptor, which is what steroids do. Right. They interact with the same receptor, but to a, you know, the magnitude, the impact is a bit different, but it's another story. Estrogen receptor modulators, on the other hand, similarly, they interact with estrogen receptors and can either cause activity at them, stimulation, or antagonize them um, and kind of have like a pseudo-estrogenic effect in some areas of the body, depending on how the drug is designed, or an anti-estrogenic uh, activity, depending on you know the drug in question. With Clomid, clomiphene citrate, this is one of the most well-known, well-used, I don't know, clinically applied drugs that essentially deprives in certain tissues estrogen receptors of their estrogen receptor activation. So it's like typically you would have a certain amount of testosterone gets produced in your testes. Most people are familiar with how testosterone converts to estrogen or to DHT or just stays as test. The amount that converts to estrogen, it does a bunch of different stuff in the body, fulfills physiologic functions, and at a certain level, you need a certain amount of estrogen in your brain, your heart, bone, like everywhere to do certain estrogen-mediated activities. And once you've achieved like a certain amount of, what just happened? <laughs> so if there's a little blip, guys, it's just because there was a Zoom issue. But anyways, I was saying something to the effect of 
at some point, I was talking about the estrogen receptors that have to be, they get activated in different tissues in the body to mediate physiologic functions, whether it's, you know, maintaining cardiovascular support, brain support, like whatever it is. And at a certain level, your body has enough activation and activity downstream to that activation of these receptors to kind of indicate we no longer need more of this. Like your body has a feedback system to actually regulate that you don't just like arbitrarily shoot exorbitant amounts of signal to your testes and then produce insane amounts of test, which would then downstream lead to a you know proportional amount of estrogen. Your body regulates this in a way through the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. It's like an axis that regulates this. So when you shove a CIRM into the equation, a selective estrogen receptor modulator like Clomid, you can basically trick your body into producing more test faster or to a greater level because you are basically cutting between that signal to your brain that says we have enough estrogen. So if you are cutting the signal off to some extent and saying like, okay, we are depriving the body of estrogen in certain tissues, you need to make more because this drug essentially antagonizes those receptors and can't have real estrogen bind to them and do its effects that it would normally do. That drug then causes a downstream cascade where your brain is like, oh, we don't have enough estrogen. We need to manufacture more. So how do we go about doing that? Well, testosterone is what converts to estrogen. So first step of that, shoot more signal down to the testes to make more testosterone and okay. then downstream to that. So do you think from a from a performance standpoint, I mean, obviously, you know, you went over how Clomid, right, is the why what's the difference between Clomid and Clomiphene? Like, how would you describe like one? Uh, of that's just the the brand name of the drug. Like is Clomiphene Clomid. citrate is the actual drug name and the brand name that it's like marketed under is Clomid. Right. As so, far as I know. OK, so Clomiphene citrate used for coming off of steroids to basically yeah, or fertility build. support. Some people right. use it to, you know, increase so, testosterone. But in general, it's like testosterone producing. It pushes the natural cascade. It's not exogenous so, steroids. Yeah. Would somebody then use clomiphene without being on steroids? Say like a perfectly healthy adult wants to get an edge as like a performance enhancing drug. Would clomiphene benefit them? Just just starting off with clomiphene rather than going test, doing a cycle, and then going in, you know, doing the uh, cycling off with clomiphene and maybe HCG. What does clomiphene work by itself, essentially? Yeah. Somebody who has a lower end of the reference range test, for example, that has symptoms of hypogonadism, some HRT clinics might prescribe them clomid to raise their testosterone naturally to the high end of the reference range and trying to achieve symptom relief to okay. not have to take ex ex exogenous testosterone. So it doesn't mean it's necessarily the best thing to do, but it is done. So Mika being a 19 year old, really athletic dude, probably highly isn't... unlikely he's using it for performance enhancement. It's more in a recovery context, almost certainly recovery, unless he has like a rare disorder or he's overtraining the shit out of himself and crushing his hormone production, a myriad of things that could otherwise be, you know, extreme circumstances. Cause again, it's like an extreme anomaly outlier elite right. athlete. So you never know. So BJJ um, guys train fucking hard, you know, they do. They really do. Yeah. They, I mean, this kid I know trains ridiculously hard. So if we look here after a thorough review of the case, including examination of medical records provided by the athlete, USADA determined Galvao's positive test was caused by a medication prescribed in a therapeutic dose under the care of a physician. Although the substance was taken at the direction of a physician, the code requires that the athlete obtain a TUE before using prohibited substance, which Galvao failed to do. So instead of getting like the three or four year, he was he was able to prove that there was therapeutic use, but he didn't get the therapeutic use exemption. And what I'm wondering is, you know, it does seem a bit dubious that um, an 18 year old at the time, I believe, you know, if he was taking it back all the way in June, I'm sure he was 18 or, you know, just turned 19, that he was prescribed this by a doctor. Um, and if he, and yeah. he, he could have been prescribed it by a doctor, but the doctors can, you know, they can help out athletes. What, without like speculating too much, you know, what is the likelihood that a doctor is going to prescribe an 18 or 19 year old 
um, uh, this drug, clomiphene? Extremely low. Extremely. Like you would almost be like extreme circumstances, sure. But even then, if an 18 or a 19 year old was hypogonadal, you would be looking for either lifestyle factors that are extreme, that are influencing it, or some sort of genetic predisposition, like a pituitary tumor of some sort, or like actual gonadal failure. Like, is there a problem with your actual testicles? Giving a guy Clomid, you're just increasing the signal to his testes, which then increases the amount of testosterone produced in healthy functioning testes. So it's like, the reason he would be taking this would be like we could get into the medical reasons, but ultimately right. it is extremely unlikely you would be prescribed this for like therapeutic purposes and not in the context of recovery or something that could push you to, you know, the higher end of the reference range that could be ergogenic. Being that, and then and this is more of a devil's advocate take here, um, being that Mika is in an extreme situation, is there, is there a possibility that his, you know, that he is hypogonadal because of the hard, heavy training? Like you can't completely rule that out, right? Or yeah, you have to also take into account a lot of the doctors nowadays, especially in the hormone side of things. It's very new. It's uh, you know, I don't know. Like a, a lot of people are getting into it haphazardly, and oftentimes doctors are not thoroughly educated on the intricacies of the gonadal axis that I mentioned. Um, they might be, you know, even certain endocrinologists. I've heard some like crazy horror stories because they were more tailored to like thyroid treatment or something like that, as opposed to understanding how male hormone interactions work. But with somebody like this, if he came to a doctor, got a blood test and it was like, oh yeah, your LH and FSH are, you know, low end of the reference range and your T on to total T is like 250. For your age, it should be 700 or 800. You know, there's something called Clomid, which could otherwise get you to the top of the reference range by increasing your LH and FSH which is actually just an oral pill. You don't even have to inject anything and it's still natural. That is certainly an outcome that could have happened as a result of intense hard training, maybe not sleeping enough, um, suboptimal recovery. You know, it's not impossible. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely here's a scenario a, I could see. So, you know, here's a drug that could aid with recovery that isn't exactly going to crash your testes. It might actually help. Uh, the opposite. Aid. Yeah, right. Um, which I think a lot of people think that, you know, and this is all speculation, but, um, a lot of people think that, you know, this is a, him cycling off, uh, cycling off before the test potential test at least, which uh -huh. is definitely the possibility, but it could also just be the only drug that he did take. Um, and it, and it's illegal. Let's take a look at what, uh, Mika said. He said this about six hours ago. Now we're pretty, pretty late into the evening here, Derek. Uh, y'all already know the news and I want to explain my side now. My doctor used a banned substance in my treatment. My father and I have always tried to get closer to the best professionals to help my career. And unfortunately that mistake happened. I don't know. It's a weird translation from Portuguese. This is for my fans, the people who admired my work and career since new, uh, my sincere apologies. I am also pissed about this situation. I'm starting from scratch again. Okay. So on and so forth. But basically, uh, saying that the doctor used a banned substance in his treatment. I would love to see like the specifics of that treatment. Obviously, you know, everything under HIPAA, you know, you never gain access to something like that. But it's important when athletes say this, that, it, you know, it wasn't them, it was their specific treatment, that we know exactly what that is. Because, uh, Again, like you said, it's extremely rare that something like this should be used for a 19-year-old kid, especially someone who's this athletic and seems healthy to the, to the, uh, for the eye test, at least. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to BJJ, I think there is a sort of underlying assumption by a lot of people, too, that if they're competing, they're probably in an untested federation of sorts. So maybe he didn't adequately disclose, like, hey, I'm going to be drug tested. He thought he was just going to a doctor is going to help him. Who knows? Like, I don't know all the context, neither do you. Right. But it's entirely possible this doctor might have thought he was helping him for BJJ, not knowing he's going to be drug tested. Because it's like Clomid is a really stupid drug to get popped for. Its detection time is like four months in the urine. So if you thought you were competing in a drug tested federation and you were mindful of drug test parameters whatsoever, and you're so a top athlete, you would think you would have at least taken a little peruse of the 
you know, a lot of banned substance lists and been like, oh, this is like the easiest fucking thing to get popped for. So this this is um, what I brought up in my last video. The IBJJF tests, but they like also don't. They're not. Yeah, you're like, just like rolling the dice that you might not get tested. Yeah, and it's it's a weird thing. I've like you can kind of feel it. So I've competed in IBJJF before. You can feel that like they kind. I mean, it's it's the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Feder like Federation. It's it's basically um, you know it connected to USADA but loosely. And then when USADA, okay, you want to contract us, we are going to go at you guys. And so, like, th this happened with Felipe Pena. It happened with Kainan Duarte, two very big names, a couple other people. Um, if you look at the USADA sanction list, you see these names. Um, but there are guys who are just using and going. Like, they're just using and going. They're not trying to cycle off. They're not trying to do anything. So, I don't know. I, I think, you know, these athletes are starting to learn, and they're just going to stay away from the IB IBJJF. Like, honest yeah, to God, I, that, that has to be the move. Just stay away. Yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, the guy was on Clomid, and his competitors aren't allowed to use the same thing. Granted, they're, you know, getting around the tests just the same and are probably using more aggressive shit than Clomid for sure. But it is, uh, like, you know, he should have been more aware of the rules. You're on an actual therapeutic dose of Clomid. It is going to boost your test levels. Like there's something there. So regardless yeah. if he was trying to recover or he was trying to just like get a healthier natural output by optimizing his, you know, overtrained HPTA or something. Either way, he still used it and yeah. admitted to it. So yeah, you know, absolutely. It is what it's it is. Blatantly a banned substance. So all right, man. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me again.